Coming up on Global Challenges, a journey back in time. It's like the way the world was 50,000 years ago, and I think that there aren't many other places in the world left like that. But even life deep inside the Amazon is changing with the times. Hello there and welcome to Global Challenges. We're coming to you from a noisy Mexico City and the hustle and bustle here. It's a great contrast to the location of our first story, which could hardly be more remote. We take you deep into the Amazon where nature is the driving force behind everything, including the power supply. Elena Cavendish de Mora took the long journey up the river. The Amazon's sprawling, hectic capital of Manaus is a stark contrast to the lush tranquility of the forests that envelop the city. Few rare species can be spotted here, although mankind is in evidence everywhere. Living in squalor, sailing up and down the Amazon's great rivers, trying to escape the hopeless abandonment and environmental degradation that plagues the interior. But on board of the Certeza, which means certainty in Portuguese, the journey upstream is a trip back in time, away from the chaos of Manaus, towards the unspoiled Xixuau Xiparina Reserve, the home of the Caboclo people. The voyage is long, more than 30 hours over the darkly resplendent waters of the Rio Negro. A soulful passage where the river reflects the skies. As the hours drift by, the tourist has time to ponder. But for the homeward-bound caboclos, it's a countdown to a work in progress. Scottish-born Chris Clark, who has been making this journey for 20 years, says the Xixuau is his home and the community his family. So why are you so attached to this place? I think you'll, you'll understand when, once you've been there. It's a, a very, very rich area in um, wildlife. It's like the way the world was 50,000 years ago, and I think that there aren't many other places in the world left like that. Or in the Amazon, for that matter. Finally, we arrive in the Xixuau. Nature's own Venice. Its black, still waters gleam like an endless mirror, creating kaleidoscopic shades of green and endless optical illusions. This is where the flooded forests, floating meadows, and hidden lakes give birth to the area's abundant fisheries and wildlife. Even the piranha is plentiful. It's both feared and food. One hundred and seventy-two thousand hectares of protected forests. The Xixuau Xiparana Reserve is precious. To some, this is a vision of Eden. To others, a land of opportunity where communities are blossoming like the forest itself. Managed and owned by the locals, the caboclos have preserved their traditions while keeping an eye on the future. And with the help of the Solar Electric Light Fund, a Washington-based nonprofit organization, the caboclos now have the first solar-powered village with wireless internet access in the forest, brought here to fill a huge void. Traditionally, life has been very difficult for these isolated communities along the tributaries of the Amazon River. Their needs are often overlooked by politicians, their forests coveted by commercial loggers. But with a few incentives and some simple technology, the people of the Xixuau Xiparana Reserve have been able to change the course of their destiny. To Chris and other members of the community, the new technology has not only helped them bridge the digital divide, it's quite literally changed the way they look at their world. For generations, the caboclo view their forests through predatory lenses. But here at the Amazonia Association School, children learn the importance of preserving the environment, whether in their classrooms or over the school's wireless solar-powered internet system. Here, the cost of school books is not an issue, and opportunities are endless. Older generations see the benefits, 
Some may even experience them firsthand, but the change is daunting. A senhora vai usar a internet? Não. <laughs> Muito obrigada pela internet. So why don't you give it a shot? Agora eu não aprendo nada para pagar a velha numa. No way. I can't learn anything. You can't teach an old parrot how to talk. Not me. I have lots of hopes to learn new things. I used to know nothing, and now I know so much. Louise is the village's jack of all trades. He's a merchant marine, sometimes snake handler. And full time football fanatic. But his greatest test has been his work as a registered nurse. With little help, in an area once afflicted by malaria and other tropical diseases, he's come close to performing medical miracles. But even Luis is seeing some relief with the arrival of telemedicine, a technology that will enable him to seek medical advice overseas and perform tests such as cardiograms live on the internet. So now with telemedicine, this technology will enable me to tackle situations that are beyond my means. I will be able to contact the doctor's office and he will be able to give me guidance to transmit to us an answer on what to do with a patient and give us a proper diagnosis. And life appears to be thriving along the waters of the Xixuau. Chris tells us a story of an incident last year when a commercial fishing boat captured 10 giant otters near the reserve. We started hearing all these giant otters calling, and they were making an enormous racket, these giant otters. There was like 10 giant otters in the water, all screaming. So we came back here and uh, emailed Manaus, and in Manaus they phoned IBAMA, which is the environment agency here in Brazil, and they caught the boat on its way back down to Manaus. But the Amazonia Association is struggling to be heard especially by some members of the political elite who see environmentalists as a threat. One of the other benefits of having brought internet here is that I think that we can finally give the people of the forest a voice now, because all decisions made uh, concerning the Amazon tend to be made outside the Amazon, in distant cities like Brasilia or Sao Paulo or Rome or Washington, without consulting the local people. As with nature itself, creation is a work in progress, and the community has as many challenges as hopes for the future. I would like to see the whole of the Jaupuri turned into a preserved area where we can run projects of sustainable development with the communities. I'd like to see the children of the people here becoming teachers and teaching the, f the future generations. Elena cavendish Simora, CNN, on the Xixuau Xibarina Reserve in Brazil. And that is it for this edition of Global Challenges from Mexico. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.